praise the Lord. Amen. This is the day the Lord has made, and we are here to rejoice and to be glad in it. Amen. And before we go into the Word of God, I would like us to spend a few uh, a few seconds in prayer. So wherever you are watching me from, please let us just pray together. Father, we thank you for this uh, awesome time that you have given us. We are blessing you. We are giving you the glory. For God Almighty, you gave us so much. And, oh God, we can never afford not to be thankful. We are so thankful, my God, for the good life, for favors, for the blessing, for long life, for good health, for, for protection. What a blessing. Thank you, oh God, even for the relationship that we have with you, oh God. What an opportunity. Lord, we worship you and we praise you, oh God. For, Lord, you are so good to us. And, God, and oh God, for this reason, we are saying thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Praise God, today is Wednesday night and we will be, you know, talking about giving a subject that I had begun, uh, you know, teaching some, some weeks ago but something happened, I did not continue. So I just felt like I should continue with the same subject of giving. Praise be to God. And uh, today is Wednesday night, and it is our Bible study time. So I will go, you know, very slow so that we can, uh, you know, squeeze, uh, you know, milk from the Word of God. Praise be to God. There is time to, to hurry and there is time to take it slow. So tonight we are going to take it slow. And please just get to join me and get connected in Jesus' name. And once again, this is Pastor Felix Mulamata from Royal Family Christian Center right in Vinduk. So we thank God for this time that the Lord has given us. And I am here to say God shall really show up in your case in Jesus' name. Praise be to God. And we shall be talking about the spirit of giving. And we just want to, to handle the subject with care but of course without compromise. And uh, you know, the subject of giving faces so much uh, controversy and so much uh, opposition, and one may wonder why. So we just want, uh, you know, uh, maybe just to iron out some of those misunderstandings concerning giving. Now let us read from 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 1. And, we are, and it's quite a long passage, it's quite lengthy, but we will see how we will tackle it. Anyway, um, you know, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 1, the Bible says, Now, brothers, and this was Paul writing to this community of believers, Now, brothers and sisters, we want to tell you about the grace of God. So now listen to the, you know, to the way uh, this man, the, the, this great man of God, Paul, introduces subject of giving. He began by saying, uh, uh, he, he began by telling these people about the grace of God, which has been evident in the churches of Macedonia, and awakening them. And of course, I'm reading from a, a amplified uh, version, awakening them a longing to contribute. So this grace of God that was upon the Macedonian church, it was the giving aspect of life. So these people were giving, and God tamed that attitude of giving as the grace of God. And verse 2, the Bible goes on to say, For during an ordeal of severe distress, their abundant joy and their deep poverty together overflowed in the wealth of their lavish generosity. So now Paul recommended this, uh, uh, this community of believers, you know, at Macedonia. Uh, he recommended their giving because they did not give out of their abundance. They, give, they gave out of their poverty. Now, of course, we have heard people uh, saying that, uh, you know, people should not give now because of the challenges many are facing. And uh, I don't think that could be a, a, 
a right spirit to approach you know, the circumstances that we are living in. And verse 3 says, For I testify that according to their ability and beyond their ability, they gave voluntarily. And I just want to say this before we get uh, any further, that they gave without any, anyone pushing them to do so or anyone trying or, or anyone talking them into giving. They did this willingly, begging us. And of course, they were even begging uh, Paul to, you know, begging Paul that, that uh, Paul could receive their giving. You know, begging us insistently for the privilege of participating in the service for the support of the saints in Jerusalem. So the poor were giving to a well-to-do church. In fact, you know, the Jerusalem church was at one point a well-to-do church. Not only did they give materially, as we had hoped, but first they gave themselves to the Lord and to us. So now, when we talk about giving, it goes beyond just giving materially. It is giving oneself to God. And in fact, if you find somebody, you know, uh, struggling with giving, then we can easily conclude that the person's life is not yet, you know, in good standing with God. If God has taken hold of your life, you can never at all struggle with giving materially. So they had first given themselves to God, and then they, they gave to God, or, or they gave to others more easily. Okay, so now the easiness in giving uh, materially is in fact based on one's uh, life given to God. So, do you know, uh, when, when we talk about giving, it is quite a huge, huge, huge thing before God. So now Paul uh, went on saying, we are in verse 3, not only did they give materially as we had hoped, but first they gave themselves to, uh, to the Lord and to us as his rep as his representatives by the will of God, disregarding their personal interests and giving as much as they possibly could. So giving actually, you know, comes to do away with our selfishness. Giving is, in fact, an indication that somebody is not self-centered, but is God-centered and other-centered. Now, withholding is simply saying that I am self-centered. So if somebody stands up and says, you know, this giving, this giving, the, you know, that, that, that in itself is saying the person is self-centered. Okay, we go on, but, uh, but just as you excel in everything, for now is encouraging this community, and, uh, you know, the church at Corinth, but just as you excel in everything and lead the way in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in genuine concern, and in your love for us, see that you excel in this gracious work of giving also. So you should not just excel in these other areas of life and boast if, at, if you know you are actually uh, you know, falling short of grace in this area, uh, which is giving. I'm not saying this as, as a command to dictate to you, but to prove by pointing out the enthusiasm of others, the sincerity of your love as well. For you are recognizing more clearly the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, his astonishing kindness, his generosity, his gracious favor. So now Paul here was saying to this, uh, you know, to, to this community of believers at Corinth that look at Jesus Christ, okay? For you are recognizing more clearly the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Giving is actually recognizing the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. So if I give, I am actually saying I have the same spirit like God. Okay, so now we can, we can conclude, therefore, that giving is actually the nature of God. 
uh, for John chapter 3 verse 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave. So because he loved, he gave. He was motivated by his love to give because man was in a bad shape. So he did not give to people who were good. He gave to people who were in a, in a, in a bad state. And God did not give because he had many sons. It's because he had lost many sons and he had only one. And in order to see many redeemed, he had to give his only begotten son. So giving does not tell or, or you know, calculate you know, cannot only be done when we are in abundance, when we have all, and then we give some. No, you know, giving has to be the nature of man. We are made in the image of God. So giving should not only be, be done when we have much. All right. So because God gave his only begotten son, and this is what Paul was trying to make this community understand, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich, abundantly blessed. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. That is, he stripped himself of all glory, and he came and walked upon this soil. He became man, and you know, he went to the cross for man. The man was deprived. I give Give you my opinion in this matter. This is to your advantage. Who were the first to, to begin a year ago, not only to take action to help the believers in Jerusalem, but also the first to desire to, uh, and uh, but also the first to desire to do it. So now finish this so that your eagerness in desiring it may be equaled by your completion of it according to your ability. Verse 12, for if the eagerness to give is there, it is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what he does not have. For it is not intended that others be relieved of their responsibility, and that you may be burdened and fairly, but that there that but that there be equality in sharing the burden. At this present time, your surplus of our necessities is going to supply their need so that, at, so that at some other time, their surplus may be given to your, to your, uh, to your need, that there may be equality. As it is written in scripture, he who gathered much did not have too much, and he who gathered little did not lack. But thanks be to God who puts the same genuine concern for you in the heart of Titus. Praise be to God. What a powerful portion of scripture. So now we have to understand that giving first and foremost is the nature of God. So you and I should look at giving as the nature of God. Now God is a giver in the first place. God is a giver. Okay, now we, we can never separate God from giving or we can never treat the two, the two separately. The two go hand in hand. Where you see God, then you see giving. Where you see giving, then you see God. All right, that's why no one resists a giver. Everyone wants to run to the giver. So giving has become a center, you know, as I've said already, giving has become a center of controversy in the church, especially in the church, in the body of Christ. The world has no problem at all. You know, they give to one another. If you go to to a bar, you find drunkards buying alcohol for one another. They never struggle to share. The world never struggle to share. You find all these millionaires, they give, you know, to, to you know, um, uh, to causes like uh, cancer and, and so on and so forth. You know, they easily do that. The only institution that struggles with giving is the body of Christ because we have to come and examine, you know, it's like we, we really need to understand why one should give. But you find that the world easily gives. People give to the government when the parties are campaigning for, you know, for those elections. They go and solicit for funds, you know, and the people give freely and no one stands up to oppose. But when it comes to giving to the church, that's when everyone would stand up and begin to criticize. And I believe that that thing that stands up to criticize 
is the devil himself because he knows that when the church understands this aspect of grace, you know, the church will actually get into divinity because God is a giving God. So giving in church and for the purpose of God's work is often criticized and opposed and that should, you know, cease. Now, while governments and other organizations are sustained by what they receive from their well-wishers, so all these organizations, they receive money from the well wishes and by so doing they are sustained so so is the body of Christ. god does not rain money from heaven you know the you know the god uses individuals he uses people to give to the church so that the church can be sustained. There are so many things that are done in church, and I'm not yet to support those who are abusing, you know, the saints, the children of God. That's not my, my, you know, my responsibility right now. My responsibility is to preach the word of God the way it is supposed to be taught. So now the church has things that should be done. You know, there are people that are still paying the mortgage, you know, they are building and they are paying off the money to the banks, you know, they, you know, they, are, they are running programs in churches, you know, there are so many things to be done, there is power to be paid, there are water pills and on and on and on and on, and all those things have to be attended to. Okay, so now where will the money come from? Money will come from the people who are in that congregation or the people who are in that community to give towards that. Okay, praise be to God. Just like a country, a country is run by the money it gets from its citizens. All right. Okay, so if people you know, stop paying tax, that, that, can, that, that nation can collapse, you know. So the, uh, any institution is funded okay so giving is a, is is as odd as god and it is a godly nature okay so god gives for you know for uh for us to keep on you know living on earth he keeps on giving that's why we can never run out of oxygen. Oxygen is ever supplied for you and I to continue breathing or existing here on earth. Now, of course, there are individuals who are using the system of giving as a way of manipulating their followers, which, of course, but is bad and has to be condemned at all costs. It is not right to enrich oneself. But anyway, you know, when we see such things, we should not throw the baby together with, with the dead water. We have to keep the baby and throw out, you know, what we do not want. So we should not do away with giving just because someone came and abused it. No, there are people who are teaching salvation in a wrong manner. So we can never come and claim that salvation does not work, okay? There are people who are preaching healing in a wrong way. So we can never come and say healing does not work or does not exist or God has stopped healing people. No, 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 no. We have to get back to the word and look at it the way, you know, we are supposed to look at it. Amen. So, however, giving should not be avoided and criticized because of some guy who is abusing it. No, no, no. So, we should not criticize giving because some guy is abusing giving. All right. So, I should not do that. For example, if someone, you know, had a bad experience or a bad marriage, you know, somebody cannot come up with a conclusion that all marriages are bad. No, no, no. That is not true. Because there are others who are enjoying their marriages. You know, if, if I told you were abused by a man, so you can never come and say, all men are evil. That is not true. There are other men who are so good. Okay, who are so caring. So if you were mistreated by a woman, you cannot come up and conclude that all women are evil, they are bad. That is not true. They are women who are very caring, very good. All right, so now giving is the nature of God. John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave. God is a giver. That cannot be 
uh, you know, uh, disputed or be debated on. God is a giver. That, he, that, that is his nature. God gives. God gives. God always wants to give. And God can never be motivated to give because he's a giver. That is predominantly a giving God. He's predominantly a giver. So it is very important, therefore, to understand the spirit of giving. Very important to understand the spirit of giving. So now, the Bible talks about the grace of Jesus Christ. So now, what is the grace of Jesus Christ? The grace of Jesus Christ, that is, you know, Jesus' ability. What was his ability? It was the ability to give himself to the undeserving world. So he, we, were, you know, we did not clean up ourselves first for Jesus to come. He came while we were far from him. He came, or he came and died while we were yet sinners, the Bible says. So now the grace of Jesus Christ is the ability to give himself to these people who are undeserving. So you and I, we were undeserving. We did not deserve the grace of God at all. There is nothing that we did, you know, to make Christ to come from heaven. We did not repent enough. We did not worship God enough. We did not praise God enough. We did not exhort him enough for him to come down. He came down on, on, on his own. He came down because he is a giving God. He came down because he loves us and he gave his life. Jesus himself said, no one takes my life from me. I lay it down. I give it. No one and kill Jesus. He laid down his life. He surrendered his life. He gave his life for the salvation of mankind. So now, when, when we talk about the grace of Jesus Christ, we are talking about the ability of, of a man to give sacrificially, to give even when you know that this person does not deserve at all. Okay? So that's why Jesus did. He gave up his rich status. We know that, you know, Jesus, you know, before he came to this earth, he was still God. He was still King of kings and Lord of lords. He was on the throne. He was exalted high above all, you know, but because he loved us, he left all that and he gave himself to mankind. So, wow, you know, so that is the grace of Jesus Christ. You know, he left everything behind for our sake. He left everything behind and he gave himself to us. So we therefore have to examine the spirit of giving or the grace of giving. We have to examine the grace of giving in the time we are living in. What is the grace of giving? You know, we have heard so many times, you know, people saying, you know, give and this shall happen to you. Give and you shall be blessed, which of course I, am, uh, I have examined that and uh, I have come to a conclusion that I do not give in order to be blessed. I give because I am already a blessed person. That's why people now have become callable or can easily be deceived because their understanding is I give so that I can be blessed. Let us look at the grace of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ did not give himself so that he could be blessed. He was God. So he left all that and he gave himself to others so that those others can be like him. Okay. So now we have to examine and to, put, and, and to put giving where it is supposed to be. All right. So now giving, you know, is not so much so that you can benefit from it, you know. So now the, the reason why so many people are being deceived is because we look at giving as something that I can benefit from. I want from, I want to be blessed, I want to receive. I give $100, then I should have a 1000 you know. So now the motivation is not love. The motivation is now self-centered because I want something to come to me more than I give. And I'm not saying that when you give, God shall not do something. God will definitely, because it is a principle, when you give, you know, of course, something will come to you. When you plant, you will have an harvest. But now, when we look at the grace of giving itself, we have 
to change our perception. We have to change our thinking. And that's when we are going to, to see, you know, the, the manifest of, you know, the manifest power of God. That's when we are going to experience God's dominion in our lives. Praise be to God. I'm going to end here and we'll continue next week on Wednesday, same time, six o'clock, with the same subject of giving, the grace of giving, and your life will never be the same again. I'm just here to remind you that your giving does not make you blessed. You are a blessed person. It's because of what Jesus did. He gave himself. That's why you are blessed. And now that you are blessed, now you can give. That's why, you know, God came to Abraham and said, I'm calling you out of these people. I am going to bless you. And then you are going to be a blessing to other people. I am going to bless you so that you can be a blessing to other people. So God has called you. God has blessed you so that you can be a blessing to other people. You are not a selfish person. You are a blessed person. You are a giver. Praise be to God. And you are going to change lives. You are going to touch lives and people lives around you shall be blessed because of your presence. Praise be to God. And we are, we are ending here. Now if you are sick in the body, you, you are not feeling too well. Probably there is a pain in your body i rebuke that pain you know you know you have uh, uh, you know some issues in your life i pray right now for god's intervention in the name of jesus you know maybe you are feeling so heavy you know in your heart i rebuke that spirit of heaviness right now in the name of jesus i speak the peace of god that transcends all human understanding to overshadow your life and to fill your soul in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Praise be to God. If I told you you are feeling so hopeless in your life, there is hope for you because Christ in you, the hope of glory. Praise be to God. I speak right now the power of God in your life in Jesus' name. Be blessed, be lifted up, and be encouraged. This is Pastor Felix from Royal Family Christian Center. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.